Hey everybody, it's me, Undead Viking. You can see that I have Panamax out, and that is the game that I am reviewing today. Uh, it has been getting a lot of positive press, and um, and rightfully so. Uh, this is a game uh, by uh, a three-person designer group. Um, I apologize for the pronunciation. Uh, Guild Ori, uh, Nuno Centario, I love the fact that Nuno, middle name, Bizarro. But anyway, Nuno, Bizarro, Centaro, and Paulo Soledad. Now, um, the latter two uh, have designed one of the best games uh, that has uh, that came out um, in recent history, uh, and that would be Madeira. I, it's over here. It's somewhere. I, I, I did a review of that a while back, and that remains one of my... Um, absolute favorite games. It's nice and crunchy and tough and, and uh, a game that I don't play nearly enough. I should play it more. Um, and uh, Gil uh, actually reviewed a game uh, that I really enjoy called Carav... Uh, uh, I'm sorry, reviewed, designed a game uh, called uh, Caravellas. And I did a review of that a long time ago. I actually went back and watched it and I was like, oh my gosh, look how young I am. But um, uh, so, and that was like this, this interesting little, uh, like navigation, um, like discovering different ports type of game that I really enjoyed. Um, but regardless, uh, this, this three person team came together and made this game called Panamax, which is all about each person, uh, running a company, um, that, uh, is in charge of shipping and moving, uh, their, uh, stuff from one side of the Panama Canal to the other. And, um... It has all these interesting little ins and outs. I'm not going to touch on a lot of them right now in my introduction. I want to show you how to play. I'm going to try to be as succinct as possible uh, with playing. I don't want to make another one of my epically long 45-minute uh, to an hour-long uh, videos. Uh, but um, I am going to try to show you the different aspects of the gameplay so you can kind of uh, get a feel for how that goes. And then we'll come back here like we always do, and uh, we will uh, talk, and we will uh, discuss, and I will tell you exactly why I think Panamax might very well be uh, the best game to be released in the year 2014. But, alright, so uh, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself, and uh, uh, I kind of gave away the lead, if you will, or buried the lead, if you will, uh, with that uh, statement. But, um, bear with me, uh, and we will show you how to play this, and then we'll come back and I will gush all over it. <laughs> alright, here we go. All right, here we have Panamax, and uh, this game looks absolutely beautiful, and it is accurately representing the Panama Canal. And, and, and you know, this is one of those things where they really went above and beyond, in my opinion, uh, to to make the artwork pop, and you know, add that like three dimensional look, you know, with the like shadows of the clouds and what have you, and, and it's really enjoyable. Um, you know, one of the nice things about this game is that yes, it is a Euro, but it is a very thematic Euro, and and. Uh, you know, I guess you could kind of shoehorn another, uh, you know, idea into this one. You could say that uh, maybe, like, make this about, you know, asteroid fields and trying to, you know, propel rocket ships through them or something like that. But they obviously decided to try to make a game about the Panama Canal and make an economic Euro game about the Panama Canal, and they succeeded uh, wonderfully in doing so. I've said it before, player game, I'm not going to show you every single aspect of every single turn or anything like that. I, I, I'm not going to um, you know, spend an hour or so doing that. I am going to touch on the different aspects of the game so you can kind of have a really good idea of how to play it. And so when you do uh, buy this game, which I strongly suggest that you do, um, you'll be able to maybe refer to this video to just kind of help you with uh, the, the basic objective and also the basic mechanisms of the game as well. So, uh, to begin the game, you're going to roll all these dice, and you're going to place them in these spots. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, as you can see. You roll, uh, you roll these dice, um, the, the, you know, you can, and there's less dice for less players, I should mention. You're not going to roll all of them, but you roll 12 dice, and you put them into these slots. Um, if you have more than one, uh, 
die that like doesn't uh, like fit. Like if you rolled four ones, you'd roll a one into the two if there's no twos, and so you roll them up. And if you end up with too many in the sixes, you roll them back. So you're just going to cascade the dice back and forth if need be uh, to fill out when you have too many dice for the too many spots. And then you have four dice that you roll and you place them on the top row because those are like the executive actions. And once again, if you have like say three threes, you'd roll them up, you know, so you can have um, them all being in their one spaces. Uh, at the beginning of the game, you randomly choose the turn order, which we've done, and then depending on the turn order, um, that is where the sh your first ship is already in the Panama Canal, and it is being processed right now, trying to reach uh, its goal. You can't ever turn around, so once you start heading west, you got to go to the Pacific Ocean. Once you start heading east, you got to go to the Atlantic Ocean. You can't, you know, wait, I want to go back. I want to, I want I don't want to go. You know, you can't do that. Uh, and each die that's placed has a three on it, meaning that once it gets to the end, you'll earn three dollars uh, for getting that out. Now that's in company money. Now it is important to note that there is both company money and player money, and and unless like a certain financial card is drawn, which I'll show you in just a second, um, you don't uh, you don't get to count anything that your company has made. Uh, towards uh, your own personal assets. Uh, it's just what you have personally made throughout the, uh, the, the context of the game. So, um, as you can tell, just so you can, you, so it makes sense, like, you notice that, like, green is going to go first, and you can see green is kind of, has the furthest to go. They have to go this way and get over there to get their ship out of the Panama Canal, whereas the last player, um, the, the, the yellow die here, has only two locks to get to before it gets out. And it should be noted also that, you know, whenever a ship makes it out, uh, any dice that are on that ship, and not necessarily the player's die that owns that ship, um, earn money. And so there's going to be lots of times when you are going to transport other people's dice and you're going to earn them money. One of the neat little wrinkles about this game, one of the awesome parts of this game, honestly. But when your ship makes it through, you earn an automatic bonus. And that's one of the things that you, that bonus can either be in money that goes directly into your personal account, meaning victory points at the end of the game, or it can be used to get one of these bonus cards. And they are both captain cards and stevedore cards. I just like saying the word stevedore. But uh, <laughs> like captain cards, uh, you can see, have like extra movement. And this right now doesn't mean probably anything to you at this moment, but when I show you how you get to move uh, your ships uh, through the different locations and through the different spots, um, it'll make a lot more sense at that point. Now, the Stevedore cards uh, are different. And I should mention that like these cards actually have like a number on them. So one, two, three, and so like you actually stack them in that. And that's the same for both the Captain and the Stevedore cards. But um, with the uh, the Stevedore cards, oh, let me show you one actually, uh, so you know what we're dealing with here. You can see those two icons there, um, and notice those the hash marks so that you can do one or the other. The top half of the card um, is uh, like shows you either loading a, a die with a number two, which can be loaded on any ship uh, if you want to use the card for that purpose, or uh, you can load any die that's on one of your uh, incomplete contracts onto it. You can just play this card. Normally, um, you can't do two load actions, but when you have this card, you're able to do that. Um, the bottom part is actually tells you that you either get to um, you get to reduce your uh, rental fees. Uh, by three dollars. Now, basically, I'm, I'm stepping ahead a little bit here, but you can see there's all these little purple numbers here: a one dollar, a three dollar, a five dollar. You know, and um, and even like on the contracts, you can see a four. Um, when you get to an end of a turn, any of your uh, cargo that hasn't been delivered and been put over here into the staging area will cost you money, and that's one of the big driving forces of the game, trying to make sure that you're not paying a ton of money uh, for, for your stuff laying around in, inside the Panama Canal. But using one of these cards, you can reduce the, the price of that particular fine uh, with that card. Now, the difference between, see, like, the five card and the one, not so much difference here, but here you actually get to reduce, you can just kind of reduce your fee in half with using that one. So you get a Stevedore card if you get your level two ship um, all the way to the other side, uh, and you get that as, or you can take, as I said, a bonus of, of $3 that would go 
directly into your personal account in so the points that are at the end. The captain's uh, cards you get uh, you get two dollars or that thing and notice how number one has a five movement on it whereas the five card has a three movement so you can see much better if you were able to get the card first. Now the financial advisors are a completely different animal. Uh, the financial advisors actually at the beginning of the game, everybody will be um, handed uh, one of the, two of these cards, and they'll keep one, and then they'll hand one to the person on their left, and then you'll look at those two cards and you'll pick one of these, and then put the rest, and they'll go here. Now the only way you can get more financial advisor cards is if you actually build your three spot ship and then get it from one side to the other during the course of the game. Highly recommend you do that because you can then get one of these financial advisor cards that is allow you to make extra money at the game. So like this one is that for every passenger uh, that you are able to deliver, and passengers can be delivered on these cruise ships, and I'll explain that in just a little bit, but every passenger, every value of passengers you have, gets that, that value gets added to your personal stack, if you will. Here, this is the stock that each person has. If you have the stock from other companies, you get bonus money for the stock from other companies. If you deliver different contracts in the different nations, you get bonus money for that as well. So everybody's going to have one of those cards to start with, and the rest are going to go down there. So now you're ready to actually you know, kind of start playing. I just want to touch on, um, the, I mentioned the stocks. The stock value right here is at six. This is like the, the introductionary game. Um, that's how everything starts and you get a set amount of money to start with and your company has a set amount of money to start with and you're ready to go. In the like more advanced version, you'll actually kind of blind bid as to where you want your stock to be and that will actually affect uh, your starting money and, and what you're able to do. But I'm not going to go through that at this time. It's just, it, this is kind of like the introductory game, and I, which I'm assuming, theoretically, you'll be watching this gameplay to kind of get ready for the introductory game. Now, these ships are like kind of like the non-NPC ships, if you will, to use a role-playing game turn. And they're set in stone, they're ready to go. This light blue area here is where ships will go once they get and they make it over to the other side. And then they're kind of ready to be used for a contract. And then like as soon as they start, they have like cargo placed on them and they're ready to go. Um, or if somebody takes command of them and moves them, uh, they will then, you know, choose whether they're going to be uh, a USA West or China or a USA East or Portugal. And you might be wondering why uh, why Portugal? Uh, well, um, you might want to look and see uh, where the nationalities of uh, the, the design crew and you know, have a pretty good idea why Portugal is one of them that was chosen. But anyway, uh, which is cool, actually. But um, so, uh, you have, what you have in this game is that you have all these dice that are set up to take actions. And when it is your turn, what you will do is you will move a die from one of the spots and you will take the action that is associated with that die. Now, you have to take the lowest die possible on any of, any of the sections. And so, um, the lower the die is, um, the, the lesser amount of actions that you'll get. Now, these are the dice that will allow you to move. And the under each, like, so if you take this die, you can see it gives you actually only one movement, and because it's this level one, it gives you one gate movement. And so, uh, you know, maybe that, that, that isn't going to give you the most options. Whereas with this one, if you took this, you can see that I'm, three locks or gates, because you can see that on the bottom there. And you can see, and it's probably really tough to see unless you blow this up and go to HD, but there is a three underneath there. So that would be worth three movement if you chose that die. And that's one of your reactions as well. Oh, and I, I apologize. I should have mentioned uh, at the beginning of the game, um, you will people will get these. You notice on the back, there's there's nothing. Whereas on the back of backs of these, there's kind of a generic uh, delivery, which I'll explain also in just a moment. Um, you will see that these will be handed out, and everybody will get introductory contracts to begin with. And as soon as you get these, you'll be able to um, put your other ship on the board and get ready to go. And so, what would happen? So, like if I was playing um, the green player here and like I got let's just grab one here so let's say I got this contract and you can see there's a five and a two and it is Portugal so I got to find the spot that is Portugal which is there and then what I'll have to do then is I can I you have a your level two ship built already and you have your level one out there as well during the game 
you can actually then build another level one and the level three at any time. You just buy it and you thunk it down. So I have this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place it in the Portugal area like so. And then I can take two of my dice. And notice how this contract is both a five and a two. And so I can go ahead and place that down. And I go with the five and the two. Now, the thing about it, I should show this before I put that down there. You can see that there is a number in there, a five through 11. Now, that what that means is, is that there has to be a value of dice of as little as five or as much as 11 before this can actually go to port. And then we'll go ahead and we'll place that in there like so, and then that ship is ready to go. Now, um, you know, the other players will do the same thing. You know, if they have, to, and then you actually, you can purchase a ship right now if you so desire. So let's just go ahead and give Yellow America West five and one. And America West, sorry, Amer can't. Five and one, All right. and we'll go ahead and give red uh, this Russian one for four and two. I should say China, not Russia. And finally, um, another America West uh, for the black player. And that is a four and a four. And so, once again, can't get my West from East here. So we'll go ahead and place four and a four. And so that's ready to go. And then they're in those docks. Um, they're ready to move, and they have their contracts, and 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 they're gonna uh, be processed now. The thing about these is, is that once you get all the dice off of them, normally you take the, di the dice off of the warehouse and then you place them onto this card. And then see so these cards. Once you've completed and you've taken all the dice off of there, that's when you can actually take one of these flags and place it on your player board. Now, I'm gonna show you something really quick here. At first glance, you're probably gonna say, those are exactly the same. But, but you notice, actually, there's all these little icons of things that you can gain, and they're different from each one, depending on the player board. So, and it's just, we, for that reason, we randomly distribute the actual player colors, or these player boards, technically, just so, um, like, you, know, you can't get used to a certain uh, play style or whatever. So, uh, green, actually, they took the Portugal, so they're going to get a Portugal flag, and they will place it right there and and so and as they get another Portugal flag they'll go there and so on and so forth now just quickly you can kind of theoretically see what these are um, these allow you to like increase your stock level or buy a stock um, you know you can you can use that for the the, the, the stock market over there um, this gives you obviously the extra movement this allows you to uh, load extra dice um, and if you get one of each, um, this notice the little thing down there that says zero dollars. You can see there's one over here that says two. You are allowed to actually move a die from one side to the other if you needed to, but that costs you five dollars, which is a lot for the game. And so what you're able to do is if you get one of each, that costs you nothing at that point. So it's actually cheap. Now this is for the actual um, uh, the. The passenger, so you can see the little passenger icon. And so when you get a passenger over, you can just choose what you want. And this one allows you to load an extra um, extra die when you have that covered. Um, this allows you to actually, instead of, like when you take a contract, you're actually allowed to take contracts over there as well. Normally those are just there so you can see what the con next contracts are once those are taken. And this one like makes it only $2 to go back and forth. And so you place it on there and you keep track of that like so. So, on your turn, what you'll do is you'll remove a die. So, if you remove a die like this, you would go ahead and say, okay, I have two movements and I have three lock movements. And so you can go like three lock movements and two over here. And you do that just, and we use that because it's really easy to lose track of where all you're like, what, what all you've done so far. 
And so you remove this, you just kind of put that off to the side because you'll be rolling them once you take all the dice off the board. And so we find green and we're going to say, so we, he has three lock movements and two normal movements. And so he's trying to get over here, but he also has this guy over there. So he has three lock movements. So what we could do is we could take this and go lock, lock, lock. Oh, I'm sorry, first one is an actual uh, normal movement, and then we can use the three locks. But then we have a situation where this one can't get anywhere. And also, you know, so why don't we just use one lock to get out into the lake? You know, oh, I'm sorry, and it goes actually to here. And you can, and these, you know, technically you go like that because there's space for four possible ships. And so you, you use a lock, so you're going to use that lock movement. And then we're going to use one movement to get him out into the lake. And so he's, he's there. We're going to use another normal movement to get our ship into the first staging area right there. And then we'll use the last two locks to go to a lock and then to a lock. And so now we've done those movements. Now that is like incredibly simple and incredibly easy to, to, to grasp, but there are some wrinkles. If you have a situation, and I'm just gonna set this up just so you can see it. So here we have this red die and it, um, this, this ship is heading this way. So let's say we, you know, this one, we, we go through here and we go and this lake you can pass by everybody. You can go through, you can pass and everything like that. Same goes for this lake over here. So, but you go over here and you can actually then, like you, you get into this spot. Now you're kind of in a channel and you actually have to move together. And so you'll actually push other ships along with you. And you can actually form a group at that point that can't be broken up. And so you would go, okay, so we're pushing you. So that if you did a, a normal movement, you'd go into here. And then like if you did a lock movement, you'd go into here. Now, when you get to that lake, you have a situation there where now we have this one in front of us as well. So let's just say like this, this particular yellow uh, ship was, was there at this point. And um, you can bust up this group now. You don't have to put it together, but um, let's, let's say for a sake of an argument, because like green would probably wouldn't want to deliver red for him, but like if green had some movement left, and they had these two ships together. Now they have this group together. They're making a lot of money if they can just get them moved on. So they're going to move in. So they, if they move it into here, now they're going to be pushing the yellow ship out. So that if they had another lock movement and another lock movement, they'd actually help the yellow player out by getting them out of the Panama Canal. At that point, now everybody would get the rewards. They'd get their money for, for each uh, number on the pip of the die for, for getting it across, and they'd also get their bonus for the ship that they have as well. Now, as you're playing the game, it is not uncommon that when you're trying to load dice, you won't have enough ships to get dice. So like, let's say you get like a um, th this big one, the five, two, and a one, and like the green player like only had, you know, a, well, actually, let's say like the red player um, had a, a, a ship in kind of like the staging area there, and uh, and also like the this the green ship, the green three had actually gotten all the way all the way across. Now, what a totally valid move for the red player if they you know they had the dice on their card, what they could end up doing is say, well, I have a five, two, and a one, so they're gonna they they take the five. And they put it on their ship and then put it into the fact that they're going uh, to China in there. But then there's this ship just sitting there you know, because it's been delivered. It's gotten over here. And now they have the ability to go ahead and just say, you know what? Greeny, if you're going to move. Now, this might not be the wisest move in the world because what if Green decides, oh, you know what? I'm just going to sit there. And then that's going to end up costing you money, you know, to because it's sitting in that lock. But the good, there's a good chance then. But you know, so it's always a better idea. Let's say if Green already had, say, like a five on there, so like it was sitting there, and then they you're able to add onto that as well. And then you've loaded, you've loaded that because you can only really load, you know, once um, you know, you can load it on there when it's in this area. You can't load obviously in the middle or whatever. And so. You know, and now, like, Green was like, well, fine, I, I, I need to get this guy across, but, I, you know, but he's going to tow along uh, the red dice as well. You don't have to add the dice to your own ship. There's actually even a very large super tanker uh, that 
has a spot for four, and this can be moved by anybody. They can just, uh, you move the ship. And you notice it's a nine through 18, spaces for four. And the cool thing about this is that if you get it across one of your dice, if you have multiple dice in here, great. If you only have one, then you only use that one. But one of the dice that gets delivered actually counts as double money. So if you can get a six on this guy and get it delivered all the way across, you can actually earn a lot of a lot of cash. You notice how it's a big four and it's gonna be pushing things through the whole way as it goes. Now, I realize this is a lot to take in, so there's a couple other ships that I'm gonna explain, and then we can, I'll go on, I'm gonna explain a little bit about how the cargo, well, I'll explain how the cargo works. When you take a, 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 a die off here for the other action, what you'll do is you'll take the contract from that spot, so like you take there, and then you would add, you know, you, you replace the contracts, like so, so now you have new contracts available. And if you look there, and it's maybe tough to see, but you say it has a load of three for taking that spot, and with this contract you'd have, you'd put two of the dice on there. So let's say yellow was, this was yellow's turn, and they place a four and a three on there. And, you know, now they can, uh, you know, then try to figure out uh, where they're going to put those particular dice. And um, with those th three loads, and like this is the one contract they're able to take. So the interesting thing about this particular card, however, is that you'll notice that there is this little railway thing on the bottom here. And what that means is, is that that three can be placed over here in the railway yard. And that will eventually get delivered. You know, at, at the end of the turn, it gets moved to here and then moved over again. Now, what happens with that is that the dice that are in, you know, in this location, when they get over here, you earn another flag, which is, you know, good because, like, maybe you need it for your final rewards and also for the bonuses on here. But the dice total that's up here, so let me just kind of make one here. So, like, if it was like this, and more like, and. find my three here. Um, it's on. It must have a three somewhere. Uh, you then get to that point and you total up the total value of the dice that are over there and then you change the the the, the turn order. So in this case yellow would go to first because it has the most, um, black would go to second, green third, and red would be fourth. And then when you get over here, the first person who gets to pick also goes in the order of the dice as well, as far as those extra flags, and they take them. Now, on the reverse of these cards, you're always going to see just a generic um, amount. It, it is a three, and it allows you to just, you don't get a contract card, you know, you, but if you just need to get the, get the die, if you need, you know, and you need to actually get one onto a ship, um, you can do that. And some of the cards on the backs, let me find one, will actually also um, have the railway thing on there as well that you can use. So, um, you know, that is another option as far as, and that is actually, a lot of people forget about that when we play, but turn order, as with a lot of games, means a lot in this game. So it is very important to remember um, that process. And that extra flag never hurts because for the extra powers, and like I said, there's lots of financial advisors that um, the flags matter. And so that's where you can pick up an extra one by going through that process. Now, uh, there are a couple other ships. There are warships that need to get through. Um, let's see here, let's, here's the USS Iowa. Um, you can notice that it has no spots for cargo. The big X is all the way across. It has a big four spot, so it's gonna push people through a lot if you use it. If you deliver a warship to the other side of the uh, the ocean, um, and that, that I mean, I mean, and you deliver it, like you basically, you're the one who takes the last furlong, if you will. If somebody else takes, you know, starts here, goes all the way to here, and you're the one to get it to get it to the end, you're the one that gets the reward. Um, you will earn personal money, not company money, personal money, uh, one dollar for each flag of the ship that you have on your player board. So in this case, if you had like say two of these USA Easts, you get two bucks in your personal uh, player board. Now these are great for that extra, that extra thing. And also like this one's awesome for like, as I said, 
pushing people through. Now, if you happen to push a military ship through, you don't get any bonus for that. You actually have to move the ship, not push it through. Now, the other things that we have, we have these uh, cruise lines. And you can see it's a one or a two, and these things are black, meaning that this can take off once these two spots are filled, but it can take three dice of either one or two value. I notice it's the dice fest line. But anyway, uh, so um, it, once this gets delivered, the people that um, you know deliver it will get these passenger uh the, the dice that are on it that, that are yours, one or a two, and you can just, you choose that it is the, you know, not cargo, it is like the ones or twos on the cargo is like these two right here. Those could be passengers. Um, you get, like, in order for the people that, like, got delivered and whatever, you will take, you know, and the person that delivers the ship, actually moves it, is the first person who gets to take a token, and then the, the people that, um, or just long for the ride, so to speak, would get the next. But you can see there's a total up there, a five, you know, and it decreases down to a four, and four, and three, and so on and so forth. And that goes, that money goes directly to the company as well. They, they earn that cash uh, for it. Now, so you process this until you get rid of all those dice, you're moving things back and forth, um, you're delivering dice, they go into the staging area, they'll eventually go into the warehouse. But um, at the end of the turn, uh, after the last die is taken, this game lasts three rounds or turns or whatever, um, you will then, uh, you have the, the moment where uh, everything kind of comes due. Now, and, and I, I haven't mentioned it at all, and I, I, I want to. Um, I have my, my, my poker chips out, my mini poker chips out for the di for the money because I'm going to be talking about the market share and dividends and everything like that. And I'm just, because this is the money, this is my one detraction from the game, which really ultimately isn't that big of a deal because I have dice. Um, these are, I've seen these in many, many games. Um, these are, without a doubt, the worst, uh, pl like, plastic money uh, in any game that I've ever played. Um, or They're better than paper money, I'll say that, but that's about it. So um, luckily, like I said, I have poker chips and we use that instead uh, for our money. So we get to the end of the turn and we are gonna go through the process of uh, you know, figuring out the value of each company and the dividends that have to be paid to each stockholder. So, and this is where um, your personal money is going to get a boost hopefully, because the companies that you've invested in will be paid off. Now, I, with, I, I apologize. One of the ways that you can actually purchase the stocks, obviously, are with you know the, the things that happen here, but also um, you can, these executive actions, when you take a die after all the dice are gone, and you just have the dice on the top, so to speak. So let's say that we're in that situation. We just have, and so we have these executive actions. When you take an executive action, you can either take the top level action for the spot that is available, so if you take this one, or you can either purchase a single stock uh, from any of the companies uh, that, that, are, you know, that have stock available, including your own, and if you do that, that increases the value of the stock. So like if the person took this and they bought one share of green stock, that would increase the value of the green stock by one. Or if you can use the ability to raise the value of the stock by two. So like if it was the purchase of, of the, this, the, the, the black color player, they'd increase it by two. They could do that instead of purchasing a stock in any one. And even if you purchase your own stock, it increases the value by one in that case. Um, and the same thing goes for over here. You get the same two options. You can either take the, you know, the the highest level option, uh, the highest level available that, that's that's there, and have a, like a three load actions, and also be able to choose any contract. Or you can do the same thing with the executive action. You can increase the value or purchase a stock. So that being said, now so let's just say that the stock values ended up um, right there as far as uh, at the end of the first turn. You know, uh, we have one at eight. Uh, one of three, and this is the purchase. This is the value of the stock. How much it costs to buy uh, a stock, and this is the stock dividend that is paid out uh, by the player. So, the end of the round, um, after doing the rail table of moving uh, the dice over on the rail and, and figuring out the the, the turn um, platform, and then uh, you will then. Um, uh, after you've done this, 
then that's when you move them over and you will then hand out the the flags if you will and so then you will be able to uh, uh, you take an extra flag depending on the, on the on like your dice in the turn order there but then after you've done that you pay your cargo fees and what you're gonna end up doing is you're gonna look and see wherever you have a, a die on the board and how much it costs to you know have your your ship ending up there and this is everything's kind of all over the place but let's just kind of move some out here and so you can kind of see um, what's what or whatever and you know it's just be fair here I, I, I you know just so we can have kind of a, a nice assumption if you will of, of where things might be so ah, there we go so let's just uh, go with that process and uh, so you look and see where each dollar amount is and you look for the number of dice in those spots including the warehouse so they, that's five dollars so let's just take um, here we have black and they have one die in here that's five dollars um, they have a die here in this lake that's a dollar and they have two dice here in the spot that's two dollars so they're gonna have to pay four five ten dollars of company money um, just because that's that's like the rental fees so to speak um, and you pay it from your company. If your company uh, can't pay for it, then it comes out of your personal money. If you can't pay with your personal money, then you end up having to take basically a bailout, which you get 10 bucks with doing these things, and at the end of the game, you're gonna have to pay 15 for having to take a bailout. And you have to take a bailout. You can't choose not to. You, you, you basically, you have to, you, you can't go bankrupt, if you will. So after you pay all of that, now you pay dividends. And each person that has a stock in your company, including yourself, gets paid a dividend. And you have to pay all the dividends or you can't pay any of them. So, like, let's say, uh, you know, the, the, the yellow player here um, owns two, two of their own stock and one person has um, one of their stock. And they only have $7. So they have to pay out $9 in dividends. They can't pay all of them, so they don't pay any of them. Whereas, let's say, like the red player, um, there's three of their stocks out and they have 12 bucks. They pay out the $9 and they have $3 left. And so, but you don't go into bankrupt for paying dividends. If you can't pay your dividends, however, you do lose two values of your stock for not being able to do it. Dividends are probably um, one of the, other than the end of game scoring, probably the best way to get your personal fortune up. And so, being able to invest in companies that you think are actually going to be able to pay out for you is probably like one of the one of the toughest things to pull off in this game, but also like best roads to victory in my opinion. But regardless, um, at the very end, um, you then after the end of each round, there is a manager director managing director award, and so for the company that's highest on the scale, that was able to pay out its dividends. Um, that person gets a token. And the first one is worth $3, the second one is worth $5, and the last one is worth uh, 7 And so here you go, and that'll just, you'll have a token that at the end of the game, it'll be worth uh, that extra money, those extra points at the end of the game. And you do that for every turn. If, it is very possible that no, that, that token will not be given out, because if not, if no company can pay its dividends, which is very common, uh, no managing will get a director award. Uh, no managing director will be given out because, well, you all did a horrible job. And you're lucky to have your job at the end of that round. So, uh, after then, after that's all, any cargo that got delivered will again move over to here and be in the staging area once again. And so now you got to figure out how you're going to get that stuff out and get it processed. And then you roll all these white dice again. You place them in the, in the, in the token. You uh, replace any cards that need to be replaced. And you start it up again. Um, at the end of the game, uh, you total up to figure out who wins. Uh, you total up uh, all of your money, um, all the assets that you made during the game, and you have to make sure you keep those assets separate. On the player board, they actually suggest you know, like keeping you know, part of it over here and part of it here, but you know you can figure it out. It's pretty easy. Uh, of the financial advisor awards, you get to pick two of those cards. So if you have four of them, you pick your two best, and you get your bonus points for those. Any managing director awards you have, and then you get to pay off, you get to sell off all of your stocks for the value of the stocks. Not the dividend, but the actual value of the stocks at the end of the game. One of the other big payouts that you can have. So, like, if you had, you know, like, 
three three shares of of, uh, of of black there, you'd get 24 bucks there at the end of the game. After you've totaled up all of your money from doing that, you pay off any bailouts, bailout loans that you had, and whoever has the most money uh, then will win the game. And if you have a tie, which is I haven't seen that happen, but it, I suppose it could happen, definitely, um, the tr final turn order of the game will determine the tie. So there's absolutely... No way you can have a, a mutual winner in this game, which I do like a great deal. So, there you go. That's a lot to take in, and I probably missed a few steps. I probably misspoke a couple of times. I do apologize for that. But I hope you have a really good feel for how the game is played and how the game works. Um, so let's go on to my conclusion so I can tell you exactly uh, what I think about Panamax, why I really like it, and um, you know where this whole like kind of medium heavyweight Euro where it stands as far as like games in general. Uh, okay, so here we go. All right, so Panamax, there you go. Um, you should have a pretty good idea of how the game is played and uh, what you need to do uh, to uh, hopefully uh, play it well and win. Um, I haven't yet to win a game of Panamax and I've played it now, gosh, I'm gonna guess eight times, nine times. I'm, I, I don't record my plays, I really should. Um, I just want to, before I talk about all the things that I really like about Panamax, let me let me just take a couple of moments and just talk about something uh, that, that this game makes me think about. Um, so, uh, the, Nuno and Paulo, they designed um, Vinos, which is a very, very crunchy, uh, 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 lots of different moving parts, very, very um, uh, tough on the brain, uh, Euro, and then they also did Madeira, which is the same kind of just, you know, but I love those games. I love, like, trying to, like, wait, if I do this, then that ties into that, then that'll do this, and oh my gosh, I can't figure this out. I love, uh, I really enjoy uh, games that make my brain go fuzzy. That's the reason why, like, games like Dominant Species and Urban Sprawl um, are, like, really, really high on my, like, best games of all time. Um, uh, you know, it's, I can't play them all the time. Uh, you know, I can't, I can't, uh, always just sit down and play, like, some, you know, monster three-hour mind-crushing, uh, game. But, um, when I want one, I, I'm glad that I have games out there that do that. Now, here's where I'm going to go with this, and I, it's a little bit of a commentary, and I do apologize for that. You can probably skip ahead a minute or two if you don't want to hear this, but, um, as the gaming community, uh, this hobby has expanded, and it's great that it's expanded. I, I love that it has. Um, we have kind of fell into this kind of miasma of this weird medium light weight euro that, that, that is everybody's, like, favorite thing. Um, you know, like, games, uh, like, uh, Five Tribes, which, you know, was cute and fun for about two plays, and then I got incredibly bored with it. Um, you know, after that, you know, it's, it's stuff like that, where, uh, I, I find myself, um, you know, not, uh, being inspired by the gameplay anymore. And I mean, and I understand that those games have a place and, and there are rabid fans of that game. I, like Five Tribes, for example, I, I, I have friends that just can't wait to play that game again. Um, you know, other games in that, um, you know, genre, uh, recently, excuse me, um, I mean, even, like, games like Seven Wonders is kind of the same deal, I mean, at least that's got the player interaction that I really like, um, but, you know, games like Abyss, or, um, uh, games, uh, gosh, I, I'm being kind of put in the spot here, and I'm trying to think of stuff, uh, um, even, even the game that I really enjoyed, Lords of Zidit, you know, is just kind of the same thing, I mean, but that kind of say, the programmable movement is something that I've always enjoyed in any game that I've played, so, um, that kind of gets saved a little bit with that one, but, um, you know, um, I, I, I don't know why I'm bothering trying to think of a bunch of different examples for you, but regardless, I mean, it's just like, we kind of have, um, this glut of that kind of like, well, that's, that's kind of an interesting little game, but there's really not a ton to it, you know, I mean, I mean, like, and I, and there's a, there's exceptions to the rule. I mean, like Caverna is is like a really really good, um, stronger medium game that I I enjoy. It has still has lots of fun little choices and and, and you know difficulties in creating your your engine. But um, 
I'm really glad that there's still people that are willing to make games that are that have some weight to them, that have that that grit to them, and I realize that those don't appeal to. Them. I mean, I mean, for example, I mean, people think like Russian Railroads is like a really tough game. I've I've talked to people. I shouldn't say people in general, like all of them, but I mean, I've talked to people that have actually said that. Um, Russian Railroads is like, oh, that's a really difficult game. And and I kind of look at them and I'm like, uh, no, it really isn't. You know, I mean, um, I love that game. I got my dozen plays out of it that I really enjoyed. And then it got kind of basically put on the shelf to be taken down like once a year when I get like the itch to play it again. Um, so, I mean, and that's kind of like where I'm at, you know, in, in, in my gaming idea. If I can get a dozen plays out of a game, I really think... Uh, and, and doesn't like highly interactive, like interesting plays out of out of a game. Uh, then, then that for me is is a mark of a, a, a well made game. Um, you know, and I don't think uh, I think it's the rarity that we have that we like find games that uh, we constantly are bringing them back to the table uh, to be played. And, and it's even more rare when those games that are constantly being, being brought back to the table, there are games, you know, like Panamax, you know, where, where, you know, and I wouldn't even say this is a really, really heavy game. I think some of the, um, the, the, the I shouldn't say tricks, but I mean, I think some of the hoops that you have to jump through and the things that you have to plan for make the game difficult. I mean, yeah, you know, I always just, I mean, I always have this game, I have like one great turn where I, where I'm like really profitable. And then the other ones, I just, you know, I can't get my ships moved. I can't get anything where I want it to go. And I ended up paying through the nose and rental fees, you know, it's just kind of like I'm at a, <laughs> at an old video store. But, um, so, I mean, there's, but I wouldn't say mechanically that this game is really all there's all that much to it. I mean, it isn't doesn't have you know um, the weird uh, connection between like the spot like in Madeira, the spots on the island and the different workers you use and and the different crops and, and and all that other stuff. I mean, it's just like you know that had that weird layer upon layer upon layer mechanism going on that that made it difficult. And whereas I find Panamax to be very straightforward, and in in, in a way that's I think a really good thing. Because of the fact that if you are able to, like, present somebody that, like, you know, it's like, oh, I've heard that game's kind of tough. I don't really, you know. And then, like, you're able to say, no, 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 look, this is how the game works. And it's pretty simple. You know, you got to put your dice on the ship and you just, you know, and then you get them on there and you move them. And, and then if you can get to the other side, you get to collect them on. You know, it's like, like the actual... And I think the theme actually pays off really well here because it's very visually understandable. There's no abstract, real aspect to it. I mean, um, you know, you, you you get to see your stuff going from one side to the other, and you can like look at it and you can see immediately where you're at. And whereas, like I said, being able to be successful at this game uh, can be very difficult and very trying at times. Uh, you know, mechanism-wise, uh, the the game itself is is very easy to teach and uh, very easy to present, if you will. You know, and um. I found myself really, really enjoying each and every decision that I made with this game. I found myself, like, challenged by figuring out the puzzle that was, what am I going to do with this die? Do I have enough money to switch it over to the other side so I can do something else with it? If I can't, how can I optimize what this die is going to give me? And all, you know, it's like, where where am I going to put my cargo? I need to get it out of the warehouse, you know, because it's it's going to cost me a ton of money if I sit there. You know, do I put it on somebody else's ship? Which I think is, it, it's kind of like, <laughs> this is totally a weird connection, but it's kind of like the game Survive, where, where you put your really high-scoring pawns on other people's ships because you know they're going to want to try to save it, and then you let them do the work for you to get them to the island to survive. 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 Uh, so, <laughs> in this game, it's kind of the same way. It's like, well, I need this cargo taken. You're not going to let this ship that has, like, two of your dice sit there. So if I put one more die on there... It's in your best interest to move it, and you're not gonna you're not gonna, you know, uh, 
take take the 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 the, the hit to your personal stash uh, and and you know lose out because of the fact that you're you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna haul my stuff and you're gonna like it and, and you're gonna get it over there and so you know it's that kind of stuff that I, that I, I like about the game this the, the weird interaction and the weird interplay between the players um you know I could go on and on I mean it's it's one of those games where yeah it might take you a couple hours you know to play through I mean, after, and, that, and admittedly that's a couple hours is after everybody knows how to play so like the first game definitely learning game is going to take you a little more a little more time but after everybody knows and you playing with four maybe playing with four players that all know how to play the game they played it before you're coming into that two hour two and a half hour mark in my opinion and um you know the thing is is that uh it's one of those situations where um that time just flies by you know you don't even really notice it you know it's 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 all of a sudden you know you're on you're you're wrapping up turn three you're 75 minutes into the game and you're like holy cow <laughs> what what happened you know it's like i i don't even remember like you it, it just because it because of the flow and because of everything that happens and because like the one turn leads into the next and it's like you know there's there's never like a big wipe down of the board and then you start fresh no i mean everything's there and so yeah there's there's like kind of a, a mild cleanup moment but for the most part it's just a continuous action of boats going back and forth the train yard and everything else and all of, and, and all those things you're trying to collect and understand and 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 you know optimize each and every turn and and it's so it's it's not just um you know one interesting decision it's an interesting decision that that stacks on top of another one that stacks up on top of another one stacks up on top of another one and so forth and then you find yourself in a situation where because of an action you may have taken you know 40 minutes ago compounds what you're doing now and you're able to either and that either ends up ruining you or ends up actually uh you know allowing you to cash in uh big time you know and by by getting your cargo to the other side so for all of those reasons i can't recommend i can't recommend panamax enough if you are a fan of economic games you should probably pick this up if you are a fan of like kind of it's kind of worker placement because you're putting your little cargo on the on the ships and moving them uh, you know, I, I this is something you're going to want to play. If you are a fan of, you know, medium heavyweight Euros, this is something that you're going to want to play. I mean, it has all the things that I love about games. It has tough decisions. It has int intricate puzzles for you to figure out. And most of all, like, and I, and I, and I want to mention this, I love games, and I've said this many times, I love games where I'm actually using my victory points as currency in the game. And because of the fact that you, your own personal fortune, is what is going to decide whether or not you win or lose, and since that's at risk when you can't pay off, you know, the fines that your that your company uh, uh, is is saddled with, um, you know, I, I love the fact that, um, you know, it isn't just a track mark where it's like, oh, I got 73 points. Let's try again. No, oh, I got I got 10 more points that round. Let's go again. No, it, it, your, your personal stake, your personal uh, victory point total is always at risk during this game. If you, and if you screw up, you're going to lose. And, and for that matter, I, I love that. I love that tension. I love that risk. I love, um, uh, and, and when you win a game like this, it's oh so much more satisfying than and if you won uh you know just another euro you know it, it, that, that that's you know and i and i'm not i'm not bagging on just another euro because i've got lots of just another euros back here that i've enjoyed and i still play but i would much rather win a game of panamax over any of those so there you go uh if you have any comments please leave those i'd love to hear them if you have any questions i'd love to hear those as well um, I'm sure I probably screwed something up in the rules, so please <laughs> feel free uh, to, to uh, call me out on that as well. Um, thank you, as always, uh, each and every one of you for taking the time to watch this video. I greatly appreciate your time, and until next time, this was me, the Undead Viking, in my gaming dojo, uh, telling you to have yourself one heck of an awesome day. Alright, bye bye now.